Could you explain the best way of determining the properties of the mixed air conditions along a process line? In this example, you took the proportion of the temperature and plotted against the process line, two pieces of information to plot. Could you also take the proportion of the enthalpy and use that number directly? And I think the answer is yes. So I'm gonna expand a bit on what I think this question is driving at. And hopefully in the process of doing that, I'll, uh, I'll answer the question and maybe anticipate some other related questions as well. So I'm gonna take um, a courageous shot at drawing a psychrometric chart here. All right, so in general, uh, if we have a process line and I'll kind of do this arbitrarily because um, I don't want to, I want to keep this general and then we can answer specifics related to that question. So let's suppose you have some process line that goes from A to B or B to A. I won't even specify that, but maybe it's a cooling process and it goes from A to B. And then uh, the question is, can you directly specify the enthalpy for some point in between? So let's suppose we're doing a cooling process from A to B and we're only gonna go part of the way there. So maybe we're gonna go to some, I could do halfway, but that makes it a little too simple. I actually wanna make it a bit interesting. So maybe we choose some point X that's, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30% down the line. Let's say it's 30% of the way down the line. So this kind of gets at what linear interpolation is actually all about because for any of the parameters that are linear on the psychrometric chart, we can say that if a uh, that if x is 30% of the distance from a, then any other linear parameter will also be 30% of the way from a. And you can almost think of that graphically. And in some texts, like the mechanical engineering reference manual, they call it the lever rule. So you can think of it as the distance from a to x as a proportion of the total distance from A to B is the same uh, for any linear parameter. So what are the parameters? Let's draw some more lines on this. So the parameters are gonna be the dry bulb temperature, which is on the horizontal axis, the humidity ratio, which is on the vertical axis, and the enthalpy, which is up and to the left, but still linear, even though it's on an angle. And then the wet bulb turns out to be, the, the lines of constant wet bulb are parallel to the lines of constant enthalpy. So we can also consider that to be linear. Uh, to be completely technical, the wet bulb is not perfectly linear with the enthalpy, but it's so close to being the case that there's no exception that I've ever come across where you can't, um, you can't just go directly from wet bulb implies enthalpy and vice versa. So then what can we say as a result of that? Well, we can say that this distance from A to X, let's talk about um, dry bulb temperature first. So the temperature A minus the temperature X is some proportion of the total change in temperature A minus B. And by the same reasoning, we could do that for the humidity ratio as well. We could say that the humidity ratio at A minus the humidity ratio at X equals the difference in the humidity ratio between A and B. And we could keep going. We could do this for enthalpy as well. We'll probably run out of space at some point, but the enthalpy at A minus the enthalpy at X is the same as um, A minus B. So all of these are gonna be in the same proportion. And lastly, the wet bulb temperature as well, which is a bit much to write uh, at A minus the temperature of the wet bulb at X over wet bulb at A again, uh, minus wet bulb at B. Those are all gonna be equal proportions. So tying that back to the original question, could you take the proportion of enthalpy and use that number directly? I think the answer is yes. 
you could take, um, if you're able to directly identify the enthalpy at X, because you know something, X is a fully defined state in that you found it some other way. Maybe you used dry bulb, maybe you used humidity ratio, maybe you used wet bulb, whatever the specifics were of that problem, X became a fully defined state. And then you can just draw a line of constant enthalpy. Let's actually draw that line. Here's our line of constant enthalpy. And then we can pick the enthalpy off of the linear scale on the top left of the psychometric chart. So that's the general answer to this question. And now the second part of the question, I'm gonna read uh, past my annotations here just in case I wanna to refer to them again. Why in this problem did you use the specific volume of the return room air and not the specific volume of the mixed air? I know you have spoke about which one to use and why before, but just wanted to help solidify. I had assumed using the specific volume of mixed air, which was more like 13 cubic feet per pound. This assumption did not change my answer too much. And in the problem, the answer was not close to the others. Just curious. Yeah, good question. And I took a look at this one and it did look like it made more sense to use the mixed air. So I think you, you took the right approach. Uh, I think I was probably going a bit fast and I took the, um, specific volume at B, which is uh, uh, probably a bit of an oversight on my part. I think it'd be more appropriate to take the mixed air as you did. So uh, one of the good things about that is it sort of sh shows how tolerant some problems are of, uh, of making different approximations. Let me just draw a few lines here of constant specific volume. So I didn't mention, um, other lines, like we have these lines of constant specific volume coming down across the psychrometric chart. And technically those are linear as well, but because most process lines for heating and cooling are gonna pass through those lines almost perpendicular, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to try to interpolate on those. Um, so, Zach, did you wanna chime in at all on that? No, I think you answered it. Um, I think my biggest confusion here was um, if you're taking the ratio between A and B on the enthalpy line, can you s say that that ratio is the same on the, the dry bulb temperature line or the um, humidity, humidity ratio um, linear scale? Right. So that's kind of so. like saying that this is the same as this. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, I sense you're, you're up for it, but you're a little uncomfortable with it. Yep. No, I, I think it makes sense. I, after kind of rethinking about this, it makes, makes sense. So, okay, good. Yeah. I think the, the graphical aspect of it really helps put it all together because you can almost imagine that proportion, like if that point X is 30% of the way from A, then that means that the temperature is gonna be 30% of the total, the humidity ratio is gonna be 30% of the total, and the enthalpy is gonna be 30%, and the wet bulb is gonna be 30%, all of them. Yeah, correct. Cause I, for some reason I kept thinking like, yeah, that hypotenuse of that triangles bigger on the enthalpy side versus the temperature, or the humidity ratio, but now it's like, well, everything's kind of, like you said, linear. So it makes a lot of sense that it would be whatever that ratio is still. Great. Okay. Perfect. And, and um, just one last thing to kind of tie this off. Um, and I think this is, this is probably clear, but it's just for the sake of completeness. Since we're saying dry bulb temperature, humidity ratio, enthalpy and wet bulb temperature are all linear, then what's the one thing that's nonlinear? And of course it is the relative humidity, which is why it has these curved lines that sort of parallel the, the saturation curve. So all these things that we're saying that you can just use the lever rule and set up these proportions, that's true for absolutely everything with the exception of relative humidity. When it comes to relative humidity, we've got to actually use the definition and, um, you know, find any two things, any two facts that will fully define that state and then either graphically look up the relative humidity or apply the definition. 
So that's a good little review of psychrometrics.